this is going to be like the miscellaneous update for you guys since I didn't make one of these yesterday. And there's always something new to update you with. So right now I'm weighing myself in a tank top and just my shorts. This is my workout apparel. So I'm like 229 and a half right now with workout clothes on. So I'm probably like 228. Um, last time I weighed myself, what was I, like 238, granted, I think I had my shoes on, um, so I'm down quite a bit, and the main reason I believe that is, is because, um, well, I, I cut the milk out a while back, and that originally had me lose some weight, um, but the main reason I'm down so much is the last two days, I really didn't have much of my diet, um, I just haven't been able to go to the store, which is really not much of an excuse. You always can make time to cook and all that good stuff, but that's what it was the last two days. I've really just eaten eggs. As you could see, I'm kind of on like a dozen eggs a day diet, and people are like, Eric, the cholesterol. I work out all day, okay? Um, I would like to think my cholesterol is all right. I mean, I do cardio every day. Uh, intense lifting. But yeah, I mean, I'm not just one that's going to hope cross my fingers. I'll get my uh, yearly physical one of these next coming weeks, and I'll probably have to get blood work done. So I'll let you guys know what that is if I get those results, and which I should. That's what they take. Um, but yeah, some of you guys have been commenting that my delts are looking juicy and I'm looking leaner. So yeah, I am leaner, and I've been doing delts every day for like six days now. So you haven't seen a pressing video yesterday or a pressing video today. It doesn't mean that I didn't press. I did, but they were just cooked from hitting PRs like four or five days in a row. It's just impossible to hit a PR every day. That's just how it is. Um, and it's a judgment call too. Like yesterday for my top warm-up set, I made the call not to go for it. And then today, same thing. Top warm-up set, made the call not to go for it. It's just being smart and it's knowing your body. A lot of you guys ask me when you should start doing Bulgarian um, the answer is when you have your form down for certain movements, whatever you want to do Bulgarian with, but more importantly, when you know how to read your body, how your body responds to things, like if you're feeling a little tight, um, little tweaks, like if you can push through them or if you can't, I think that's very important for my knee. I knew it was tweaked. I could feel that it was tweaked. I had a hard time like extending it completely, but I didn't listen to my body, and I kept pushing, and I kept pushing, and that's how I got hurt. Um, no good will come through pushing through tweaks. Like some of you guys have commented to me lately asking if you should keep going or if you should lay off it. You should always lay off. If you feel more tight than out of the ordinary, um, there's a stinging or a throbbing or something, just listen to your body. It's sending you a signal that – you need to work on mobility. You need to do something differently. You just need to give it some rest. Don't ever go against that. Now, muscular soreness, you can push through that. But pain, no. Especially the joints. Don't, don't do that. By all means, I will not advocate pushing through joint pain. That will lead you down a dark path with no return for nine months. Um. But yeah, I mean, the combination of losing, man, I probably lost about five pounds. It's tough to say. I'll, I'll weigh myself again in a few days after I restock, refeed on like my usual 5,000 calories a day. But if I had a guesstimate today, I've only gotten 1,000 calories in me. And yesterday, I probably got about 2,000 calories in me. And that's just because I know what I eat. So it wasn't anything out of the ordinary, but I only had one big meal yesterday and then like half a meal today so far. And I'm feeling it too. I got a headache. I feel fatigued. Um, next update. A lot of you guys have been asking for this. You want to know how big my hand is. Because you're like, Eric, I can't grip the fat grips. You must just have huge hands. Actually, guys, I don't have huge hands. Um, I'm going to address this right now because people constantly ask me how tall I am. I've been saying 6'1", the first couple years that I was on YouTube. People look at my wrestling roster from college. It says 6'1". Um, I changed that to 6'2", 
when I measured myself. I gotta find something, this isn't long enough, this is only six inches. But when I measured myself, my height, it was 6'2", and that's because before that, I never cared, and I never took my height measurement. Last time I did was when I was like 17 or 18. And I've been going off of that the whole time because I didn't, it doesn't look like I've grown. But you continue to grow until you're about 21 or so. Now, I'm not gonna just have you take my word for it. That's the thing. I think being completely upfront, being honest, being trustworthy, uh, as transparent as possible, is what makes people successful in life, right? Dishonesty, eventually that comes up and becomes more and more visible and it leads you down a dark path. So next time I'm in like a gas station or wherever they have the height things, I will measure myself for you guys. I will make sure of that. I'll have my wife do it or something so you can see like my feet and the actual measurement. So, yes. That's why I've been saying like 6'1 and a half in some comments and 6'2. Normally I say 6'2 because I wear shoes and when I wear the shoes it's like I'm like 6'3. So... End of the discussion. Let's get that on camera in the next few days. Uh, but anyways, you guys have been asking me. That was the most common question, which is why I had to address that. But then you guys have been asking how big my hands are. Like, I must have monster hands for these fat grips. Listen, guys, you don't... Yes, monster hands are going to help you. But a lot of times, like, I've been getting this excuse so much. Like, when I was a strength coach, people like, I just don't have as big of hands as you. I'm like, listen, I don't have big hands. And we compare hands. and like, the same. It's called strength. The stronger your hands are, they don't need to be big. You can grip it regardless. So I'm going to... i got to think about Maybe I'll put this like my teeth or something. I'll put this camera in my teeth. How does that sound? Ah, I don't know how I'm going to do this, squad. Uh, I just put it like right here. i got to get it, this, everything said before the f 15 minutes are up. How do you do this? So... So there you go. It's like from my middle finger to the bottom of my palm. It's like seven inches, maybe seven and a half. Seven inches. We'll just give you the benefit of the doubt. Seven inches there. Um, now you know. Now you can measure your hand and we can measure hands. Um, also, on a, on a quick tidbit, I saw this article. I don't know how accurate it is, but it's kind of cool if you guys want to know if you're naturally high test or low test i think this was like on t nation so i don't know they post good stuff i'm not gonna knock them but they said that if your ring finger is longer than your um index finger like how much longer that is than that if it's longer than you're like high test and if it's like the same, then you're low test. So this would be if it's the same, there you can see. It's a good deal longer. So I was, must have been a high test kid growing up. Now obviously that stuff's gonna be affected by all the factors, plasticizers and plastic bottles and all the terrible contaminated water that we drink and all the food that's contaminated these days. But that's a cool, interesting tidbit for y'all if you didn't know that, a little test you can do. Um, next, the gripper update. So, gripper updates. Um, I told you guys that the grippers were starting to kill my hands from using them for like eight hours and nine hours of the past. I used them about nine hours each for two days in a row. I'm talking like on and off for a total of nine hours, like on and off. And I thought the knurling what was what was really bothering me. So I bought one of these Iron Mind Zenith grippers. Uh, which is totally smooth. And I mean, it feels good, but it wasn't necessarily the knurling that was bothering me. What it was was I was using it so much, and some of you guys said I was going to get like tendinitis from doing it. It's not that I got tendinitis. What happened was I had, I started getting pain like in my hand, mainly from the handle digging in the same spot of my palm over and over and over again for hours and hours every single day. So I just decided to take a week off from that because like, honestly, it wasn't going away. I would take a day off and I would try it and it would still hurt. I'd take a day off, I'd try it, it still hurt. So I just said, all right, let's just throw it out the window and now it feels a lot better. So it was just like overuse of the pressure in my palm that was killing me over time. It was nothing to do with my forearms um, and I give a lot of credit to that 
for that wrist roller I have, the Sidewinder Extreme, that thing pumps up your forearms all around because it's like doing wrist rolling with both flexion and extension. So it gets your entire forearm pumped with just one set. So what I would do is I would grip, 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 and I would hit one of those sets, wrist rollers, grip, 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 wrist rollers. Um, in terms of the size, when I was looking for hypertrophy of the forearms, I measured, and it's just it's going to take up too much time to do it again, and there's nothing really to show. I measured again, and it was about the same. It was like 15 and a quarter. So when I first measured, when I told you I was going to do the experiment, and then when I measured again for the first update, I gained like a quarter inch to half an inch. So... I'm around the same. I've maintained that and it makes sense because it's not like, I mean, I stopped doing the grippers, but it's not like I stopped doing grip work. Uh, with that being said, as you guys know, I've been doing the fat grips and you probably just saw the fat grip trap bar deadlift that I hit with these new fat grips. Let's say the boogs on them. Now, with this being said, guys, <laughs> some of you are commenting that I should stop shilling fat grips. The thing is, I'm not shilling fat grips the company. I'm telling you, incorporate thick bar training. Uh, I've told you about alpha grips. I've told you about the fit grips. I've told you about grip force. I'm saying you can buy anything. Just buy a thick grip implement. Uh, it just so happens that fat grips is a great company, and they put up one of the challenges on Instagram, which they, they put up a lot of challenges. They give stuff away. I think they even give away money, too, if you do their challenges. So I did that challenge. I set the record for that one. And they sent me a pair of these fat groups with my name in them. And then the reason that I say they're a great company, though, is because they also sent me, they just they just sent me that, this pair for free as well. These are fat groups one. Um, <clears throat> just to give you guys an idea, you know that... Fat grips. Let me, let me grab the extremes. I told you that regular fat grips are like two and uh, two and a quarter, I believe. And then there's the fat grips extremes, which are like two point seven five, and they're like three when you put them on a bar. So these are the ones. Okay, you guys see the difference there? These it says on it are one point seven five. One point seven five. So it's, uh, it's pretty skinny, but it still makes the bar noticeably thicker. But what I found interesting about these is it almost makes my grip feel stronger when I put them on dumbbells or a barbell because it's like I can just get a better bite and get a better bite on it. Yet I'm still using more of an open hand. I'm getting that extra grip work in, making my, you know what I mean, the crushing grip a little more intense. But it just feels more comfortable as opposed to a skinny handle. I don't know if you guys have used really skinny handles. It's one of the biggest complaints I had about the dumbbells that I was pressing with years ago was they were just too skinny. I couldn't get a good bite on them. So these are actually, I really like these for just doing um, my overhead pressing work with. So I'm going to be using these for almost every single one of my sets for pressing from now on. Uh, we'll see when I actually do a max video. Maybe it'll feel better once I take it off. But... In terms of all the warm-ups, like these feel amazing. I can't even tell that a fat grip is on as opposed to this one, which is very noticeable. Yet this still improves the diameter quite a bit. I mean, you can see the hollow part is the normal diameter of a bar, and this is the extra thickness it adds. So I really like these. This is this is why I give kudos to fat grips. I mean, they sent me this for free. It's awesome. Um, last thing I want to talk about, if you guys follow me on Instagram is Johnny Bodybuilder, a.k.a. Joey D-Bag, okay? Uh, I don't want to get involved in drama, guys, but there's some times when you just got to advocate for yourself, you got to stand up for yourself. So this literally Instagram fitness model, over 60 covers of fitness magazines, posted one of my videos, didn't tag me on it, was talking trash to all his little followers, 700,000 plus bought followers probably, and everyone's making fun of me, and people tag me on this, and I'm gonna stand up for myself. If people do that to you, if anyone bullies you, like this guy's trying to cyber bully me. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna be cyber bullied. If anyone bull bullies you, you stand up for yourself, and that's the problem. Everyone's gonna bully, that's never gonna stop, but you gotta stand up for yourself, you gotta put your foot down. 
I'm going to end it there because it's 15 minutes.